I'd be home by nine Hell, I tell her that most of the time Whoa, whoa, baby, don't know on her too much Whoa, I'll tell her where, but I won't say why Oh, now, now I'm dancing, oh, I'm dancing I'm dancing with the devil Oh, now, now I'm dancing, oh, I'm dancing I'm dancing with the devil Hey guys, welcome back to Otter Creek and Rio Grande. And we're gonna get started on part two of the shoe store build. And where I'm at on this thing right now is, is making some decisions about the overall look and materials that's gonna be used going forward. I think once I'm able to make those decisions, the, the rest of the build will go pretty quick but there's a little bit of indecisiveness on my part. And I, I just got to figure out exactly what I want to do. So I've decided that I for sure want some lighting, which means that I need to figure out a way to kind of hide that lighting and figure out a way to come up into the building from the bottom, which is not going to be any big deal. Uh, but kind of the important thing that, that I'm trying to decide on right now is the overall look of the building. So the building that I'm trying to represent, let's see if I can get this to focus, I don't know if it will, is this building right here. And you can see the windows in this building are, I don't know, I'm guessing that's somewhere between 64 inches and 72 inches. I think those are basically a man-sized window. And then if you look at these windows, uh, from where they're at on the ground to the top of the window, I think that, if I remember right, is like a scale 12 feet, 11 feet. 11 and a half, give or take. So that doesn't look right when you put it in the building. It really kind of changes the dynamic of the look of the whole building. I'm not saying it looks bad. I'm just saying I'm not sure that that's what I want. So I'm thinking that when I come in with my front false or my false front, that I bring it down to right there. And that will create the look that I'm looking for. It's either that or I could also come down to where I'm just barely on top of where the door is and then you end up with these little windows here. I'm not I'm not sure if that would be anything prototypically accurate or not. So I'm, I'm really leaning towards that, which should give me more room from here up to go in with the windows because the top windows are just right on top of that first floor. So you can see where they're at in relationship to these other windows down here. So that's kind of the big decision is, is what do I do there? And then the next decision beyond that is what do I actually put on the side for the siding? Now I've got, I got three options. I can go with a clapboard siding. I could go with uh I think this is called beadboard, which I think would be prototypically accurate in some building applications. 
Uh, I know barns sometimes use this, this type of uh, board because I have tore apart an old barn before and this is pretty much exactly what, what I pulled off. Uh, or I could also go in with individual boards all the way across and come up like that, which I like the idea of that uh, because I want to put this big sign on the side of the building. And that's, that's a little joker tobacco. Now I, I've had no luck and I think I've already talked about it in a previous video. I've had no luck finding this specific sign anywhere online. I can find some little joker advertisements, but they look nothing like this. So this probably predates, you know, anything that I can find online. Uh, if anyone happens to come across that particular uh, Little Joker tobacco advertisement, please let me know, because I would desperately love to have that on the side of this building. Uh, I, you know, the reason why I don't think I want to go with clapboard or might not go with clapboard is I think the sign will just lay better and look better on the side of the building with something other than clapboard or the beadboard for that matter. So that's where I'm at. I think the first step obviously is to figure out the lighting for the building. Uh, that's pretty easy. I'm gonna get started on it. So the first thing I need to do is come in and drill a hole or notch out a spot right here in the center of the bottom of the floor big enough that my light can come up through. So I think I'm gonna keep this as close as I can to the edge of the plastic and I'll kind of explain why here in a minute. So that's not big enough, it almost is. I just need to widen that out a little more. Okay, now I want to come in with something just in front of that, because what I don't want is to see the wire on the back of the building, which I don't know that you could anyway, uh, but you might when you get it lit up. So I want to put a, a view block you know, I think in some of these old stores, you did have something right in front of the doors that uh, kind of diverted you left or right. I forget what that's called. I mean, there's, there's lots of restaurants that have something like that, uh, even in today's world. So that's the next step is coming up with that. Well, I've gone in and created the divider. And what I've done is I printed another one of these, which this is, uh, this is the bird cage in Tombstone, Arizona, if I didn't mention that in the previous video. And I'm not concerned about whether or not this stuff lines up perfectly. Uh, I'm counting on <laughs> you not actually, you know, being able to really see any of this 
from where you're going to see it from. Uh, you know, it's just providing a little bit of depth, some visual interest in the background, and something that's just not black. That's, that's really what I'm going for there. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger on this and glue it in there. And I'm just going to use regular Elmer's because it's paper. Doesn't need to be structurally perfect by any means. Probably got too much in there. That should work. Let that dry. Now, to go in and glue this just on the inside of that hole, which I'm not gonna be able to do, probably let you guys see what I'm doing. Uh, we'll see. So it's just a press fit at the moment. And I just need to put a little bit of glue in there. I think that's gonna work. I hope. <laughs> Let that dry for about five minutes. Okay, everything is dried up enough, so now we can kind of test and see if this works the way I wanted it to. Super glue should fit in there. Nice and flush. And I've got a light. It's a little off center at the moment, which if I'm going to do what I think I want to do. False front comes down right here somewhere. You might get a little bright spot somewhere, but I think it'll achieve the effect that I want. And I think that's gonna work. So now decisions on the false front and the rest of the materials to finish the build. So I'm gonna to have to think about that for a minute. I've made some decisions. So 100% for sure, the false front is gonna be clapboard siding. And I do have it marked on the back so I know which way the clapboard should be going. So any cutting I do on it, uh, I shouldn't get messed up on that. Now, the sides and the back, I'm gonna go ahead and go for this uh, beaded board. And I think this is a representation of a type of tongue and groove uh, siding and if I had something different, if I actually had uh, just planking for the size of that, that's what I would go with. But this is what I've got on hand, so it's what I'm going to use. I think a sign will lay on there all right, and it won't cause me any problems. 
So sides and back will be this stuff. Now, one thing that I'm gonna have to deal with when I do this, and that's that my cassette, it doesn't fit perfectly. It's, uh, it's close, so it's just, you know, I did the best I could, and I think, I think I mentioned this in the other video, my plastic work could have been better. So I'm moving forward, I'm definitely paying closer attention to making sure everything's square and good with the plastic. So the problem I'm gonna have is figuring out the right size of the false front as it mounts to the front. I think the height works. I think that's plenty high enough. It's actually a little, about three feet higher than what the mock-up was, as all the dimension of this building, uh, length, width, and now height, are all three inches higher than it was before. The problem is, is getting this cassette where I want it in here and then also making measurement here. So I think what I'm gonna try is instead of gluing this in and trying to measure this way, I'm gonna use the back side of the building, which I'll note is not going to be perfectly the same as the front, but I think it'll be close enough that I can make it work, especially if I cut on the outside of any lines that I make, I should be able to sand back any excess. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna try and do. bottom. So this would be the bottom. Try and get this as square as possible. And probably before I go too far, I might want to check and make sure that this edge is square to begin with. So I need to do that. Let me let me check that first. I don't think I could get it any better than that if I were to try and cut a square. So I think this, this corner should work. So. Now this top line here is only going to be for reference. It will not get cut. Okay. Just wanting to check the overall Plastic is not square. I've mentioned that already, but it should work. What I want to do is I want to make this line just a little bit thicker. Not by a lot. so I can see it just a little bit better. Now, if I've done everything right, I should get a nice square cut.
Okay, I'm definitely wide of my line. Probably wider than I wanted to be. Decided that the the next step just really needs to be gluing this in. Uh, there's always a little trepidation in doing something that you're a little bit concerned you might shouldn't be do shouldn't be doing. But uh, I think that's kind of the best thing I need to do. And went ahead and dremeled out a little trough in there for the wire. so that uh, as I move forward, if I need to set this down for any reason, it uh, can be tucked up out of the way and not cause me any, any problems. So, I think the next step is to glue this in here as straight as I can and as square as I can and then continue on. Sacrifice a brush here. Really cheap Walmart piece of junk brush. It's probably the best I can do. Certainly not perfect everywhere. I'm trying to keep this side that uh, a person is actually going to be viewing more of a little better than the other side. I've got a little protrusion here that might cause me a little problem. You should always put your ruler on top of what you're trying to save, which I did not do. So I'm being really careful. I should be able to come in. With uh, some four by four material, create the trim. And that should work. Any discrepancy that, you know, doesn't look good because it's lack of square, uh, I think I will be able to fix with that 4x4 material. So now I just need the uh, left side wall and the back wall. 
I've got the four walls laid out. They're ready to go. So now it's a matter of figuring out where my windows and doors are gonna go. And I think these windows are gonna work. They look pretty similar to those. Of course, you know, the, the two bottom windows don't look anything like what's on there, but it's, it's gonna work. And if you look right here, it looks like I've got a longer, narrower window, window than these, which I'm not 100% sure. And then this window looks a lot smaller than that one, like maybe a quarter window or a half window of that. And then I also think that there's a window here and a window here. And you can't really see it in this picture, but there's something right here and here. I'm not sure what. I think in another picture I have of this, which I, I don't have a print out of, it's on my computer though, this looks like it might actually be a coal box that you can get coal out of from the inside of the building. That's just my best guess. And then this kind of looks like a vent right in here. And I know that all of that is extremely difficult to see. And I'm not trying to go perfect for this, but you know, I think having a little extra detail on this side of the building is definitely worth the effort because it will be one of the more visible building sides of all of them in, in this area. So I've already kind of done a little work on the back side of this one, taking some measurements and figure out what I need to cut out. And I think I need to do that before I cut the windows, the, the holes for the windows, because I'm having a hard time seeing exactly where those windows need to go. Uh, because this is going to get covered up. Something like that. And then those windows should line up with the inside of the entryway there. I think that's how I'm gonna go with it. I just gotta figure out where the bot, where the floor is in the, uh, the second floor. Where, where is the, the bottom of the floor on the second floor? So it's gonna look something like that I just need to start cutting and, and quit talking. All the major wall components for this structure are complete. I've decided I'm not gonna do anything with the wall directly next to the next building. Uh, it's not gonna be seen, so I don't see much point in putting any detail there. Now, this wall, you can see I've come up with the window arrangement. And I did that by looking at this particular photograph. And as mentioned earlier, you can see there's some structure here that I'm just not sure what that is. And I'm gonna have to think on that a while before I decide I wanna do anything with it. Same thing here. This, this just kind of looks like air vents to me, but I don't know. This is supposed to be a cobbler shop. So if this is a cook stove, you know, I guess that's possible. You know, kind of the way I envision this building is that the front half of the building is probably the shop where you go in and try on shoes and whatnot then this structure on the back side is probably the workshop where you know you work with leather and nails and and stuff like that to create the shoes and then the living area because i figure you know the guy that that runs this place his whole family lives here and they probably live up at the top floor and i'm envisioning that the stairwell to the top floor here is probably back here somewhere, but I, I don't know. 
and it doesn't really matter. But there's where the windows are. So the way I do that is once you figure out your measurements, uh, and you can see I was kind of indecisive on some of this and had to erase some of my marks to come up with the others. But once you figure out, you know, where things are, uh, you, you just go in and, and put your lines where they want to be so that everything lines up the way you want. And then this particular tool here is very handy because then you can use it to slide back and forth and make your marks so that they're running parallel. And, and in this case, you know, I made sure that I knew where the top and the bottom, the front and the back were. That's very important when you're flipping things over because you will get confused. And then you can just make those marks in coordination either with the measuring device on this or with a pair of calipers. And you can do it uh, from either direction so you're getting your your bottom lined up, your top lined up, and then your left and your rights. And you can make your marks pretty easy on that. So, and this is, uh, I don't remember what this thing is called, but the, the, the patent is still pending apparently. Uh, very, very nice ruler. So, you can see I've got these big windows. Oops. And the small window. That's how that works and it'll lay on there something like that and of course i will have to figure out something for the back side of the windows uh, it'll be as simple as black paint or kind of a dark 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 gray paint now i've also you can see i've cut out the bottom rung here of the window, I think on this one, I'm going to have some curtains, maybe just barely coming out. Uh, haven't completely decided how that's going to work, but I would like to put something a little extra there. And then of course, the big area here for some advertisement. So that's, that's ready to go. Now the front of the building is working out pretty good. And I'm working on this geometry here. For what is going to go across the top of the windows. And I'm not 100% sure that I like what I've got right now. It's close. I still feel like there's something not quite right about it. That it will be something like this and I'm doing a terrible job of showing it <laughs> but you know again looking at the picture uh, there's definitely a structure that sticks out from another structure underneath it because you can see just a little bit of shadow there on uh, mine it's probably not going to look exactly like that because, you know, I really just can't tell exactly what the, uh, the structural elements are there. So mine will be something like that. And then the top side, I'm pretty sure I've got it exactly how I want it. It would be a, a three by 12 there. And then this will come across the top like that. And that would be pretty close to the way the real one looked. I don't really know why I'm talking about this instead of just actually doing it, but uh, you can see how that's gonna work. 
Now, uh, I know in the previous video, I mentioned that I would be able to finish this up in one video. That was pretty naive thinking because, you know, I haven't even started, which I'm, I'm ready to start whatever painting and or staining techniques for these walls. I'm, I'm ready to begin that. Uh, but this back wall, I need to consider this structure. And there's a little indecisiveness on my part in my mock-up, you know, I made it narrower than the building. You know, kind of studying this picture and the other picture, it uh, kind of looks to me like it's flush with the wall here. So it may be flush on both sides. I don't know, that's a decision I'm gonna need to make and I'm also gonna need to make a decision of what materials it is. Uh, it's probably not gonna focus. It almost looks to me like that might be board and batten. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Whatever decision I make is what I'm gonna make. So all that is to say that uh, I'm gonna end this video here because I imported the video into my editing software last night and I've already got 45 minutes of video and I just talked for another eight minutes. So I uh, look forward to another shoe store video and you know, I could just do all this, skip to the end and show you the end result. And I know there's many of you that skip through the video and just see how things begin and how things end because that's just part of what we do. Uh, I'm guilty of that sometimes as well. But there's a lot of people that enjoy seeing something develop in a step-by-step -step fashion. So, you know, the people that are gonna skip, they're gonna skip regardless. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and kind of do this step-by-step -step for those who enjoy it. So thanks for watching and look forward to the next video. Oh, pour me a whiskey, oh barkeep.